Oftentimes, people eat amaterushiana with bucatini. Those people uh, are wrong because bucatini is stupid. Today in No Panic Pantry, we are making pasta al amatriciana. Pasta in the style of amatriciana inspiration. It's one of those pastas that like people in Italy, depending on where they're from, get very particular and very angry about. I'm gonna, I've been making a version of amatriciana uh, most of my life. And sometimes you use what's around. Sometimes you use bacon. Sometimes you use pancetta. Bacon is one of the great ingredients that you can literally go to the most mediocre market in America, buy the cheapest bacon, and it's still pretty good. Ideally, in my wildest dreams, we're using this stuff, guanciale, which is an Italian cured pork jowl, is just gonna flavor our pasta, and it's gonna be delicious. Uh, this version is inspired, and not recipe followed, because I don't, I'm just kinda cooking, but it's inspired by this book, and it's basically uh, inspired by a restaurant called Bracioli in Rome. We got two medium, this is really four small shallots, diced up, Pecorino Romano, you can use Parmesan, you can use whatever you want to use, but Pecorino is great because there's so much fat in the sauce from the uh, guanciale that the, the sheep milk Pecorino gives a little extra funk. There's no garlic in here. There's no basil. There's no parsley. I believe sometimes you should use less ingredients just to see what food tastes like, <gasps> and then you can add things back in later. Oftentimes people eat amatriciana with bucatini. It's a, sp it's a thick spaghetti with a hole in the middle. So you can't twirl it on your fork. I don't understand the purpose. You want something with a hole in the middle? Perhaps, may I interest you? And a mezze maniche. It's basically, uh, sometimes called a bombolotti. It's like a short rigatoni and it's great. The number one thing is you want to start rendering your guanciale. If you wanted to buy thick cut bacon and chop it up, you could buy, you could use basically probably three slices of bacon. Um, so all we're gonna do now is just kind of dice this up. You can just put this on low and just let it really, really, really slowly render. I'm gonna go a little hotter than that just because I don't want to stand here for four hours waiting for it to render. And you want to just kind of get a nice amount of oil in there. This is not the pasta to eat to be afraid of fat. All right, and again, we're using a nice California tomato called from Bianco di Napoli. But just a gentle little squishing. We like a little rusticity. And that's the nice thing, a good guanciale will have a lot of these spices on it too. So you're getting a lot of spices and herbs in there as well. And I would say let this go if you can. If you got the time, go low for like 20 minutes. Did I uh, talk about how uh, bucatini is stupid? Got our shallots, we'll let these cook. For a couple minutes to start wilting, and then we'll add in our tomatoes. I haven't salted this yet because I want to wait until I get the tomatoes in because I think there's a lot of salt in the guanciale. And so just don't go too crazy yet. I don't really want like a super caramelized onion. I just want it to be softened up. I'm gonna have Ben try a little onion sampler. Mm. And then you're paying for the tomato on the inside of the bowl too, folks. Give it a little pinch of salt. If you're cooking for somebody, they're coming over, maybe it's a first date cook at your house. Not a first date, that's a weird first date. The first time they're coming over to your house and you're cooking for them, you don't want to make something that's too complex. You don't want to make something where you're like, like trying to like sear salmon at the last second. Something like this, you can make it in advance. All you gotta do is boil water, cook pasta. That's the sound of those things. In my single days, this was probably the thing that I would cook to impress a uh, date. Or if they didn't come over and they stood me up, I'm still gonna have a Water is about to come to a boil. So we're gonna add our salt to the water now. You can dump it into a colander. If you're gonna do that, you wanna use a little mug. Save some of your pasta water. It's gonna help bring this whole sauce together. Or if you're lucky, or if you bought it on Amazon for $12, you can buy one of these, which is a nice little, uh, what do they call it, scoopier. Should we see if Eliza wants a piece of cheese? 
Don't follow me. Do it. Did you film yourself stealing it? Good. As long as it's content, it's all that matters. Isn't that very good, Pecorino? Look, the pasta's done, and it's California, so there's leaf blowers. Handy dandy. This guy. You don't have to worry about it being super duper fully drained. We got some leaf blowers, we got some things happening, but pasta waits for no man. Crank the heat, get to a nice medium high, and then we're gonna let this all come together. A little extra touch, just to get that sheen on it. A little pecorine, a little drizzle of olive oil, just because you need more fat. Yeah, you know what Guantrale won't do? It won't sit on a bucatini like that. Because bucatini's stupid. Eliza, yes. come eat a bite of this. Hello? I'm coming. Blow it. I'm blowing out it. I just want to... You don't have too much. It's delicious. It's very good. It's smoky. Is there bacon in that? Guantrale. It's, um, what do you want me to tell them? It's smoky. I don't want that piece. And it's, uh... Is it smoky? It's smoky and it's satisfying. Smoky and satisfying. You heard it here first, folks. Using meat as an accent. Like you've, heard, you've heard my ribs before? Oh, it's perfectly soft. Delicious. I'll take it with me. That's it, folks. Pasta amatriciana. Amatriciana-ish, depending on where you're from and how mad you get about what I put in it or don't put in it. Tianfu has not been in this episode very much.